Hey guys, welcome to day 16, and today we are going to be talking about exceptions. And so formally, an exception is an event which incurs during the execution of a program. And so it disrupts the normal flow of the program's instructions. And so basically what that means is that something went wrong within your program, and so the program wants to like stop it before anything else wrong, you know, occurs. And so your program errors, stops working, and, you know, exits abnormally. So when an error occurs within a method, the method itself will create this object and hand it off to something called the runtime system. And so we haven't talked about the runtime system yet, but we will soon. So just imagine that when an error happens, the method creates this object and then hands it off to higher up in the system. The object that this method is creating is called an exception object, and basically it contains all the information about the error, including its type and the state of the program when the error occurred. The exception object is how we get error messages in the console. And so when you get, you know, out of bounds exception, that's the error object is where you're getting that from. And now some more vocabulary. This whole event of creating an exception object and handing it to the runtime system when an error occurs is called throwing an exception. And so when something goes wrong in your program, you're accessing something that isn't really there, you're going to get this exception and your program's going to throw an exception. This is the big picture. So now let's open up, get to some code, and do some fun stuff. And so let's go to NetBeans, per usual, you know. This is what I do every single episode of the just code. We're opening. I wonder how much of the series is actually just me opening things and waiting for things to compile and load. Yeah, okay. And it's open, awesome. We are gonna create, you guessed it, a new project. We'll go to file, new project. Here we are, we're creating a Java application. And we're just gonna call this exceptions practice. I know it's not very original, but you know, yeah, just go with me, okay. We'll put it wherever we want and it'll generate a new project for us. So basically an exception, this is also called an exceptional event, is a problem that arises during the execution of your program and it disrupts your entire program. As a result, the program or the application terminates abnormally. So we, you know, as programs, we have to handle this. How do we handle these errors? Basically, there are two types of ways we can handle exceptions and these errors. One is checked exceptions. And so a checked exception is an exception that occurs at compile time. So when you get these weird errors inside of your code that you like, when you make a symbol, it has a little error over here. And let's just do this to you know, see what's going on. So checked exceptions, this is so hard for me to say. Okay, basically it's when you go, if I go into my main here, if I go A, it's going to, it's, what is A? I don't know what A, what is A? What is the letter? That, it doesn't even know. It's not a statement. This is a checked exception. Another example of a checked exception would be int open close square bracket space int array equals new int 10 with the square brackets around it and then open close parentheses semicolon. It's freaking out. It doesn't know what's going on. Oh, that's because I used the wrong syntax. And so when you're creating arrays, you don't need these little parentheses here. So that's why I get this weird thing. So it's not gonna understand what to do. So that's when you get this like weird, you forgot this. That's, it, Java doesn't know what's going on. And so this is a checked exception. And if I do this, we save, there we go. And so checked exceptions like don't allow your program to run. There is another type of exceptions. And so you have checked exceptions. And what else do you think you have? Well, unchecked exceptions. And so an unchecked exception occurs at the time your program is executing versus like before you run it. And so you're running your program and something, something goes awry, something freaks out, something goes wrong. Well, these are also called runtime exceptions and they arise usually from logical errors in your code. And so if we add a little, you know, a little extra here, if we do another line and we do system.out.println and we go int array 10. And so what is this going to do? Well, we created this array. It has slots 0 through 9, so 10 total slots. So you have something at index 0, index 1, all the way up to index 9. Okay, cool. Now we go to this print statement. What do you think's wrong? Well, we're accessing something that's at the 10th index. That thing is not going to exist because, you know, it only has slots 0 through 9, 0 through n minus 1, where here n is 10. So if I try to save and run this, if 
I press the little play here, it's going to freak out and throw an unchecked exception. If we go down here, this, this, is, this is bad. We have an array index out of bounds exception. This is very, very common for new programmers because you're still trying to get like the logic of everything, how arrays work, you know. It takes a long time to like actually understand why the syntax the way it is and to get the logic of how a program works in programming stuff. And so you're probably gonna get a lot of these. And so this little message here is from the exception object. And that's the reason why we even know what the error is. And so inside of our main method, when we got to this point, the main method created a new object called an exception object that carried the little message, gave it to the runtime system, and the runtime was like, oh, you should stop what you're doing because we have this problem and we don't want to like ruin or freak out the system even more, so we're going to stop. So it's like a little interrupt in the system when things go awry. Now, how do we handle these problems? We know they exist. We know you can you know, access more than you're given, but how do we deal with it? Well, we can use something called a try-catch block. Basically what this means is that we ask the program, okay, try to do the certain part of code, but we know this error might arise, and so if it does, then do a different block of code that's not going to error. This is pretty broad and will make sense in a minute. So if we go to our main method, we are gonna just comment this stuff out here because we don't wanna deal with it. And we are going to say try open close curly bracket. This is gonna be a whole new type of programming idea. So get ready. And we're gonna do int open close square brackets c equals c equals new int open square bracket five close the square bracket semicolon. And so we have tried this. Then we're gonna say system.out.println element six at index five equals, and then we'll do a little plus, and then we'll say C at five, and there we go, and it's gonna try to do this. And we have a little error here, try without a catch. And so what we're saying here is try doing this portion of code, but if it doesn't work, well, we don't, we don't have that other part, the but if it doesn't work, so that's what we have to add. So we are gonna say catch, open parenthesis, array, index, out of bounds, exception, exception, E, open, close, curly bracket. Okay, now we're on to something. So what this code says now is try, you know, getting the sixth element out of the list, but if it doesn't exist, or if we get this array index out of bounds exception, well, go ahead and do this block of code with inside the catch. And so here we're gonna say system.out.println exception thrown and then we'll do a little plus E, and then we'll do a little semicolon, there we go. So what we're doing now is we're saying, try to do this portion of code, but if we get an error, that's this array index out of bounds error, then we're gonna go ahead and do this block of code which says an exception is thrown, and then it'll print out the little message E that was given. And so E will have this whole idea of the array index out of bounds, it'll tell us what's going on with the error. So if we save this, we can then add a little statement down here that's system.out.println, open parenthesis, finally finished, try catch. And what this little statement is gonna prove is that literally one thing is gonna be executed here. So we're gonna keep doing the try, and if we err on this line or on this line, we're gonna go straight to the catch. But there's no way for me to get through all of this stuff and also do the catch. Like I either do the try as far as I can and go to the catch when I get an exception, or I do all of the try and it works out, and then I end this entire block of code. So what's gonna happen is either an exception is thrown and then we go to the finished, or we get through all of the try and then we go to the finished here. No matter what, this little line is gonna be printed because it's not within the catch or the try. Make sense? Okay, let's run it. So we'll press play. Okay, here we go. So we tried to access the sixth element, but it didn't exist. And so we have this exception here. You know, our array index out of bounds was five. And instead of completely erroring and abnormally closing the program, we just printed out the message instead. So that's kind of nice. And then we have this finally finished try catch because you know, it finished, it was good. It went through the catch, dealt with its problems and then came back to society here in <laughs> our main function. Okay, and so, what if this actually worked? What if we change this number here to six? 
Well, then the sixth element would be at the fifth index, and so this would work out. And because we have this new int with the six in you know, the square brackets, we know that every value inside of our array is going to be zero, because that's how arrays are initialized in Java. So we'll press play here. And notice it says element six at index five equals zero, because that's what it is. And then it printed out this finally finished with try catch. And so notice we have the system.out.println. It happened every single time that we finished the try catch, even if we were in the try or the catch. You get this, you get this. And so by using this method of handling errors, we are actually able to prevent the program from exiting abnormally, as I said before. And so we just allow the program to say, hey, execute this instead, rather than freaking out and stopping everything you're doing. So why, why would this be helpful? Why do you need to know this? Well, sometimes you might use a try catch block on an output where you don't know if it will throw an exception. So like say you could have the index in this little try block, like we have the index five here. It could be any number from zero to 10. So sometimes it would work and it would print out the correct thing at whatever index it is. On other times it wouldn't, it would be out of bounds. Another reason you might have exceptions is because it's a nice safeguard to make sure your code is doing the right thing. Instead of checking like the value of a bunch of print statements for the correct values, we can just say, oh, only print out things when you know everything goes awry. And when you do print out stuff, print out actually stuff that has to deal with the error rather than like completely freaking out the program with your error. Given that, there are many different ways we can use these try-catch blocks. We can have multiple catch blocks for a certain try. So say there's another catch that we could do here. We could say catch number exception. Even though that's not an exception, that would be the way to do it. And you would need to make sure your little E here is a different E so it knows it's a different message. And there you go. So you could just, you know, add a bunch of catches here. And if you had like a bunch of different errors that could come from your try, this would be how you would deal with that. Now, what if we want something to execute no matter what? Well, we kind of solved that with our little, you know, finally finished, you know, try catch here. But there's actually a more sophisticated way, if you will, to do that. And so after our catch, we can do a finally clause open, close, curly bracket, and then inside of here, we can just put our system.out.println. And so it's a little bit more, you know, fancy, sophisticated to do it this way rather than the other way. So it's very clear that no matter what, you want this thing to be printed out. And so we can say, use finally here inside of this. And actually, I will copy this back and put it as a comment. So we know at one point in time it used to be there, but now it is not. So we'll say finally clause. And so you have your try clause, your catch clause, and your finally clause. And that's really the main part of this episode. And so here it printed out finally clause when we could access the element, but what if we make this 10? We won't be able to access the element. We play again it freaks out and it throws an exception, but it doesn't exit abnormally, which is super important because we always want our program to running, even if there are mistakes. We just wanna know about those mistakes as the programmer so we can do stuff to prevent those mistakes from happening again and to possibly do error correcting inside of our program. So in a try catch finally block here that we have, we have our try, which says, okay, try this. We have our catch, which says, oh, if something goes wrong in the try, well then, oh, this is an exception we can catch. Let's catch it and do something else because there was a problem initially with our try code. Finally, we can do whatever, no matter what happens with our try code, we always want this to happen. And so basically what this whole try catch finally block does is we can make a program try to do a certain block of code, but if an error occurs, then let the error be caught and do something different in a different block of code. And then if we want something to execute, no matter what, obviously add a finally. I know this was a very concept heavy video, but stick with me because exceptions are crazy important and we will talk about them more in the next video. So what did we learn today? Well, I kind of just, you know, repeated it for you. We have our try, we have our catch and our finally. Basically the try, you know, you try to do something, if something goes wrong, you catch it no matter what you want to do what's in the finally. We learned about checked and unchecked exceptions. We learned about how when something goes wrong in your program, the method that the wrong thing occurred in will create this exception object that will hold the message and what's wrong and pass it higher up in the system so then we can print it out to the console. And 
yeah. And so that's it for this video. The Hacker Rank Challenge is down below in the description. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on this video. I hope you learned something and I will see you tomorrow.